Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Morielle, and today we're going to talk about my project pan progress for the month of January. So if you want to know what I was able to use up, keep on watching because we're getting into it right now. Okay, so I have all of my project pan stuff in here. There is a lot of good stuff, <laughs> good updates, lots of progress, and you know, basically I've used up a couple of products and I wanna roll in some items as well. Overall, in the last month, I haven't worn that much makeup. I would say out of every week, I really only wore makeup maybe three or four times in that week, which is actually quite unusual for me. You'll actually notice that on Instagram, I'll post a picture of the makeup I'm wearing every single day if I'm wearing makeup. And over the last month, I've really only posted a handful of times, which is unusual because for me, makeup is a really fun way for me to, one, get my you know easy five to 10 minutes of creativity in. Um, two, I'm either filming videos on YouTube or I'm kind of fixing up my makeup to film at the end of the day. Or, you know, I just want to get into my makeup and, you know, I see them as little art supplies and I want to be creative. But in the last month, for whatever reason, whether it was because I wasn't really uploading as much because I was busy or I just wasn't really feeling like I was doing anything special and I didn't want to wear makeup or, you know, whatever. I, I was using a lot less makeup than usual and yet we still used up a bunch of stuff. So I'm tentatively doing Project Pan updates every month, but because I used up so much stuff, I don't know if next month there will be all that much stuff to document. Nevertheless, I want to get into it because I have some pretty exciting progress to show you guys. Okay, so I pulled out not only my little pouch of makeup for my Project Pan, but also the items that I've pulled for my Shop My Stash for this month. Let's start first with the Project Pan pouch. I've opened it and, you know, released its contents because I want to kind of talk to you guys about the things that I've been using. So we'll start from the bottom up. So first thing will be my primer. This primer, of course, is the L'Oreal Visible Lift Luminous Serum Tint. And if I kind of put it up to the light, I can't really see through the container all that much, but I know for a fact that there's not that much left in here. Let me try to squeeze out the air in a way that will show you how much product is remaining. Okay, so that's about it. So it's pretty thin. There's really not that much product remaining. And I don't know if everyone knows this, but I'm on a journey to replace all of my makeup items with Charlotte Tilbury items and just having the one in each category. Granted, for my non-color cosmetics, I'm already kind of there. This one is one of them and the other one is the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Primer. So once I finish up the hydrating luminescent primer and I swap it with the Hollywood Flawless Filter, I mean, it's not like I was bloated in that category anyway, but yeah, so that's the impetus for wanting to use this up. I think I only used it like five or six times since um, December was that when I decided to launch this project. So it's not like I've been using this a ton, but I do love it. I think it's a really great product. I think you can mix it in with foundations that are thicker to kind of smooth everything out, lighten the coverage a little bit and give your skin a glow, or you can put it underneath your makeup. That's what I do often just to give your skin a luminous base to begin with. And yeah, I probably won't be able to use this up in the next month, but maybe in the next two months or so, if I really am diligent about squeezing out enough, I think I should probably be able to put her down <laughs> and finally get the new one. Next, we've got a base product. Now, this is really exciting, but my Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream, this is in the Lime Friends version. This one is, as you can see, completely kaput. So she is completely out. I can finally throw this away <laughs> because I've been holding on to all these empties, like, just in general on the floor for a long time now. So she can finally go in the garbage can and I'm swapping her out for my L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. This is, I think, probably my all time favorite foundation. And I can say this with confidence because not only is it an incredible value for a price, I think this is for maybe 10 or maybe $12 at the drugstore and I shop at CVS. So it's super expensive at the drugstore, but you can usually use coupons or extra bucks. Um, which is like a cashback system for those of you who don't live in the States. And the color 425 is a great match for me. I'm using it today and it matches my neck, it matches my hands. I feel like it doesn't look too cakey. If you look at my skin, it's a really, really thin, watery consistency. So on the skin, it really wears kind of like a YSL foundation. It's kind of, and I know L'Oreal is the parent company, but it really does feel high end. It's very thin, very watery, but the coverage is so that, you know, you can really see an evening out in the tone. So I cannot wait to use this up. I almost don't even want to replace this with a Charlotte Tilbury counterpart, but you know, for now this is going to be rolled in, this is going to be rolled out. Let's talk a little bit about the brow situation. Originally I had inputted the Cabrow by Benefit, you know, this brow pomade. I'm officially decluttering this. It is dried out and it's not the right color for me, it's too dark. This is in the shade 3.5 and so it doesn't really work with my 
um, brows as, you know, as, as dark as my hair is. And, you know, as much as my natural roots are going in, a lot of my hair is kind of like a light ashy color, like a ash mousy brown, or even some, the bits nearest to my face are actually a blondish color. There's like highlights. And so when I have really, really dark brows, it comes off as really, really stark. And so for lack of functionality and the color match, I think I'm counting this as an empty. I don't really need to be scraping the barrel to make sure that I get every last dollar's worth. This was like a $10 mini anyway. So we're going to say goodbye to her. I have decidedly not enjoyed applying this and instead I've really been focusing on the goof proof brow pencil I wish I had shown you guys in December how much I've used this product because I used it every single day that I put on makeup and I've been really surprised that there's still a significant amount of product left because you guys can tell I have pretty big eyebrows like big like lengthwise and also they're quite thick naturally I have a lot of eyebrow hair so that big fluffy brow look I try to actually groom it a little bit because if I don't groom it it does look quite overgrown and so um, I do use this pencil I enjoy it I like how thick and waxy it is especially because I think the shape is really really nice and I don't know more, more convenient I think than the the micro pencil so I've really been enjoying this using it a lot and you know I don't really know how much progress I'll make but this is officially going to be rolled in instead of the pomade now I think we're able to move on to complexion stuff so we'll start with the mist this is where I am now I think previously I was like halfway or something like that so yeah, I think I, I used a significant amount of the mist. This is, again, whenever I do my makeup, I will mist my face, and this is the only one that I'm working on. So no roll-in for that one. Next, we've got um, a powder. This is my Prep, Set, and Glow powder. Absolutely no progress here. I don't use that much powder, so you can't really see any difference, nor do I feel like I actually used all that much of the powder. So that is kind of a... I don't know. I really wasn't expecting there to be much progress on that front either. However, e.l.f. Camo Concealer, use this up. I think there's a little bit left in here, but hopefully you can see. I mean, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's absolutely, I mean, I'd have to scrape at it. And this color and this texture are both wrong for me. So I'm happy to call this an empty. And if I try to get my wand in there, you can really see that it's scraping along the edges. There's not enough concealer for me to really get a significant amount out on the wand. So we're gonna call this an empty, which is really exciting. That means so far we've already gone through four products. Concealer is too light and I've already swapped it in for a different product. We are now using the Charlotte Tilbury Oh god, what is this called? I don't know what this is called. It's this under eye corrector. This product, everyone has seen it. It's, ooh, mine is dirty already. It's only a couple days old and she's dirty already. Um, it's this. It's the under eye peachy corrector and you might be wondering, hey, why are you swapping an eye, you know, concealer with an, a peachy corrector? And I actually think that this works really well as a concealer. It's an emollient cream product, um, but I put it underneath my eyes. It kind of cancels out the dark circles. I can go in and tap a little bit more under there and it gets rid of some of the sallowness some of the peach tones I think are actually much more effective than just using a really bright concealer right like using just a very white slash cream colored concealer is all good and fun um, but it doesn't really get rid of these sallow tones of the skin and so this is actually quite effective for under the eyes I also do it to kind of color correct the darkness of my pimples so here I'll have scarring and you can definitely see a little bit of it kind of you know peeking through but I actually do find this really nice and I don't actually set it. I don't set it. And I don't have dry under eyes. Um, I'm, I'm fairly normal. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm more on the oily side, but because I'm using a dabbling, my skin is veering more towards normal to, if anything, no, I, I would say I'm still squarely normal, not really dry. My skin barrier has since recovered and this is fine for me. So if you have super oily skin, you might want to just press it down. But for me, this has been working really well and that's what we're rolling in for concealer. This is the only concealer that I have, so it's not like I have another one to replace it with, so I'm pretty happy with this. If I feel like I really do need another um, liquid concealer and this is not working out, I might just purchase the, I think it's like the Vanish Away Light Wand um, Concealer, but I will update you guys if I do happen to need a different one. Let's talk about, I think that's it for those basic things. Um, in terms of mascara, I finished up my mascara. I've talked about this death, um, it's been a long time coming, this Essence Lash Princess Mascara. This is the False Effect Lash Princess Mascara, and I love this guy. Honestly, it is one of my favorites, and I'm really sad to see it go, but it is probably over a year old. <laughs> All the writing has been like completely busted like the the um, Screen printing is like all disgusting because I've had it for so long. Yeah, this is well over a year old So it's time for her to go and I wanted to replace her with a really full body mascara But I don't really have any really full body mascara. I have two um, Here which I guess will put them both in the same category. I don't really know 
This is the L'Oreal Paris Air Volume Mega Mascara. I bought this when it came out and although it's cute and adorable and I actually really really like the packaging and you know it looks a little bit like a hot air balloon, it's all adorable, it's kind of wimpy. Like <laughs> I love the wand too, you know, it's a, it's a natural bristle wand, but when I get it on my lashes it's more... I don't know, it has like an elegant vibe, not a dramatic vibe, you know what I mean? And when I have really short, stubby Asian lashes, I really need it to be a little bit more aggressive. So even though this has been waiting in my drawers for a month already, I don't think it's aired out enough. This cap is, I mean, not airtight, but it's airtight enough that it's not drying out quickly enough. I need it to dry out for another month or two before I can really start using it. So in the meantime, I have my Charlotte Tilbury Push Up Lashes Pillow Talk Mascara. I don't know why she would call this a Pillow Talk Mascara because it has nothing to do with the color Pillow Talk, but it has have the rose gold cap and so for that reason I am grateful to have it. This has a great brush. It reminds me of the Fenty Beauty brush. It's completely flat from the side and then it kind of splays out and tapers along the edge and so what you do is you apply the mascara in a thick clump and then you comb it out and for that reason even straight out of the tube like as a new product it's a little bit more voluminous than this so I'm thinking to pair them together or kind of alternate but in any case we are swapping out this empty with these two mascaras and you can really actually feel the weight of the difference this one is much lighter and feels completely empty now all right, let's move on to other products. Next thing I have here is my highlight. This is my Kimchi Chic Hollywood Glow Highlight, and you can see that the difference in this one is that there's no imprinting anymore. So yes, I've used this product. I've really enjoyed it. Can we see it? Focus, please. Yes. So this has been thoroughly used. I've I think this is a really amazing product because I sweep it all over the face. So not only do I concentrate on the cheekbones, I also kind of dust it in a really light fashion all over the skin to give my skin that kind of hourglass, luminous kind of wedding glow. <laughs> Everyone says like lit from within. This is that highlight for me and so I've really been enjoying that one. We are keeping her in. Other thing I've been using is my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Film Star Bronze and Glow. Yeah, this one here, I really feel like this one is gonna hit pan and, and you can actually see kind of the shadow. Uh, if I tilt it just right, you can kind of see there's a dip like right here. I don't know how else to convey to you that this thing is so close to being used. Ugh. Next month for sure, I'm definitely gonna be hitting pan on this. And I think I use this almost every single day. This is a serious bang for buck value. <laughs> I mean, maybe not, because I think this was almost $70. But yeah, love this, I'm using it today. It's a really, really natural shading color. The highlight I use, I don't love the highlight. So honestly, once I use up this contour color, I think I might either declutter this or give it away because the highlight is actually not what I like. I know a lot of people say the highlight is soft and smooth and they like it, but for me, I think I would rather just get a compact of the bronzer because yeah, I'm not really into the highlight, but we did make some really good progress. Next, we've got some other standalone products. This e.l.f. bronzer in Sunkist. I didn't really use it. I think I used it a couple times and you can maybe see a dip in the middle but no pan to speak of and Bare Peach I used almost every other day. So I use Bare Peach a lot. I don't know if there's a little bit of a less um, noticeable imprinting on the top of the pan but yeah you just have to trust that I use this almost every day that I've been wearing makeup. You can really see the rough and tumble use of it because the compact itself is really busted. I think that's one of the ways that you can tell high-end and low-end makeup apart, even though you have it for a similar amount of time. The actual, like, I don't know, component of the product really kind of goes to the wayside as soon as you start using this thing religiously. But I really love the color. I especially love the sheen on the skin, and I'm not tired of it yet. All right, next we've got some exciting progress to show on my 1111 and my 75 degree warm palette. So this one is the 75 degrees warm. You can see some significant use, but it doesn't look like I've made any real progress. But I did use these colors quite a lot, specifically these three, which I usually kind of avoid. I'm more inclined to dip into this really ultra shimmery, ultra thick, chunky golden one, but the other ones I used a lot more, especially this rusty color. Where the real fun is, lies in my 1111 palette, and oh my gosh, do you see that massive pan in this shade right here called Situation. I absolutely love this Rowan shade. I can use it to top basically any look, and I definitely did. <laughs> I use this all the time, and these two following with a close second and third place. The only reason why they're not as, I guess, gouged out is because these last two shades look really similar on the eyes. I know separately they look, you know, not like the same, but once you get it onto your eyes and you kind of blend it out to make a, a one shadow look, I think they're gorgeous, and by all means, I think um, they are worth the money as 
four individual single shadows, but I think when you put them in a quad and you try to use them as a quad of colors, they do end up kind of blending into one another, kind of smushing all over the place. So I do this as a one color makeup look, except, um, you know, that, that just means you're able to use them less and less. Whereas this color, I'm able to top on top of everything else. So let's say I use a different um, eyeshadow palette. I don't know, let's, let's just grab my Venus eyeshadow palette. So if I use this, I can top it with this sparkling shade. And that's why I use it so often. Whereas these two creams, I kind of have to have them stand on their own. And if I'm not using them in conjunction with anything else, because they're single shadows in my, in my eyes, in my collection, they kind of serve that one note purpose, which I love. I think they're really useful. Um, but they just, they don't get as much use. But I am so really proud of the fact that I was able to hit so much pan in that big, chunky shade. And I'm a little bit sad that I'm going to be using it up soon. All right, let's talk a little bit about this liquid liner from Jewel Potton. And I don't know if this is the brand. I think it was called McQueen, but I don't see it on the label anymore. You definitely can't see how much I've been using it because it's a liquid liner and the weight is so little. But whenever I put the wand in, I can really see that it's not really picking up as much product anymore. But she's still going strong and I use it. I mean, I have it on today. I don't know if anyone can tell. And I did not touch up my makeup after work. But I'll usually just do a little dot underneath the um, underneath the lash line in the inner corner and just over my eyeliner. I'll kind of just sweep it across like that. And it gives my eye a little bit of glitter. It doesn't transfer anywhere. And if I do a really small kind of thin layer of it, it doesn't crease or crinkle or kind of get bunchy and weird. So I do like this product. I think I will be able to use it up pretty soon. All right, next we've got a lip color. This is my Wet n Wild lipstick in Bare Your Soul. I mentioned that I don't have a lid for this, but here is what I have left. I definitely think that we have a lot of progress in terms of how many months I'll need to work on this, maybe another two months. If I keep this at my desk, which previously I had my Clinique Black Cherry lip color and it also was like a skinny tube like this and I actually used it up. So even though it's an empty, it's not part of my project pan officially, so I panned it. Um, but now I think I'm going to be moving this over to my desk because I drink and I talk and, you know, I'm working with students. Sometimes I wipe my mouth or I'm blowing my nose and my lip color wears off. So if I keep this there, I think I'll be able to reapply fairly often. And so if I do that, this is done in a month or two easy. All right. Honestly, I think that was everything in terms of what I have for my project pan. I did my primer, my foundation, my setting spray, my blush, bronzer, highlight, and my eyeshadows as well as mascara and concealer. Okay, so that's everything. Um, honestly, pretty good turnover rate. I've been able to one, one, two, three, four, four products, I think. Four products I was able to roll out and one product I was able to hit pan on. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with that. Everything basically goes in this little pouch right here. And so if I really don't wanna think too much about makeup, this is the pouch that I reach into and it's just super easy for me to do a full face of makeup. I do think that come end of February, I might be itching to do another quarterly refresh, but I don't really think I'll be using anything up until then because everything from here on out is going to be products that I've just rolled in or complexion slash color cosmetics that really aren't going to be used up all that quickly. Oh, I think I forgot about one lip gloss. Oh yes, I think this lip gloss, this is the filler lifter gloss by Maybelline um, in the shade Sand. And you can actually see that this one is definitely on her way out as well. So I don't know if you would call this panned, but there's very little pro product kind of just like scraping around on the inside. I definitely think that I can use this up in the next month or so. You can really see that, you know, the packaging is much bigger than it needs to be. And this is coming from someone who doesn't really like lip gloss. So I'm really surprised that, um, you know, I was really able to get through this so quickly. Let's do a little, you know, one, two, and it feels like, you know, you're using an entire doe foot worth of product. So. This one I also think I'll be able to use up, but none of them are like color cosmetics. So by next month, I don't think there's gonna be as much exciting progress to show you guys, but I wanted to update you guys anyway. I know Project Pan has been really fun for me to work on because I talk a little bit about how my morning routine usually includes getting ready and putting on my best you know, face so I can face the world and really feel ready to do the work that I have to do. And sometimes I just want an easy makeup look to, you know, help me get there. And so I think that Project Pan has actually been really fulfilling and having an intentional purpose and using things up so that way I can get them out, clear them out systematically so that way I feel ready to approach 
mindful replacements of my makeup collection has been really fun. So let me know if you have made any progress in your project pan. I really love watching other people's videos, even though it's just like someone talking about how much makeup they've used. It feels really inane, but at the same time, I really feel connected to you guys as a part of the community. So I really appreciate every single one of you guys who watches these videos. Cheer yourself on. I know you can do it. If you have any goals, let me know what they are. If you've crushed any goals, let me know what you've crushed. Thank you so much for watching. I love you and I will see you very, very soon. Bye! Thank you.